in about December, um, I remember you talked about feeling like the team didn't really have a clear kind of leader um, in the locker room. And I just wondered when you saw that change and who you feel like has stepped up the most. Yeah, I think that's a great question, Christine. I think a lot of guys have have stepped up. I think that, you know, certainly Jalen Williams has kind of been a leader since the beginning of, of this team assembling together. Um, but but I do think that along with uh, you know, Jalen, J.D. Note has been a great leader for us. I think Trey Wade, um, when his minutes increased and he became a starter, it allowed him to have a bigger voice and a bigger imprint on the team. It's very difficult to be a team leader if you have a bit role. Um, but I think when his role changed, his voice changed, uh, credibility in the locker room changed with an expanded role. Um, so I think those three guys in particular, uh, two of them are our best verbal communicators in Jay Will and, and Trey Wade. And, and, then, and then in his own way, Stanley uh, has shown leadership as well. Um, so, I, I, you know, I, I think that with comfort, you know, with both Stanley Amude and, and Trey Wade, it's helped us from a leadership standpoint. And then we've talked recently about kind of not looking too far back and not having these kind of hangover games. But I also wondered about, you know, now that you've got this kind of tough stretch coming up, how you frame that with with preparing for future games, but not looking too far ahead. Yeah, we're only worried about, um, you know, one one game, one team, and that's Tennessee. Um, it's not the player's responsibility to look at, um, you know, the second, third, fourth, fifth game in this five game segment. It's my responsibility and solely my responsibility to get the guys ready, um, you know, beyond just one game. Um, you know, our assistant coaches are all focused on their prep schedules. Um, I'm only worried about one game and, and uh, we understand that, um, you know, a lot of the media outlets are saying we have the hardest schedule in the entire country remaining, but with that also allows us opportunities. Um, and it also, quite frankly, um, puts us in a position where when you play that tough of a schedule, um, you know, it's hard to it's hard to slip drastically as well because of the strength of schedule. So I like where we're at. I like that we're going to be challenged these last five games. It's it's uh, you know, we understand that that we've done an incredible job um, late stages of the season to be able to win whatever it is, 10 out of 11 and the one loss being a road game by one point. We're playing as good as basketball as any team in the entire country, bar none, up to this point. And now we understand there's not a lot of teams uh, in any league are going to have to play the competition that we're, we have to play. So I, I like where we're at. Um, it'll give us an opportunity going into the SEC um, conference tournament to understand um, some of our holes because some of these teams coming up, they're going to expose uh, you know, holes that you might have, and it'll allow us to continue, continue to get better as well. Thank you. Alyssa. I feel like Nate can't find my controls. Okay. Hey coach. Um, congratulations on win 20 for the season. That's three years in a row. Now you've hit that 20 win mark, uh, with three very different teams with very different identities. And so just kind of talk about that accomplishment. Jalen talked about how you're so good at coaching the little things. Um, just helping get this team to hit that mark for three years in a row. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think that, um, you know, that's a goal since, you know, since I've become a college coach was, was to try to win 20 plus games, not just 20, but how do you, how do you get over 20 every year? I think that, you know, the hardest thing um, when you, you know, when you coach is always consistency. Um, you know, anybody can, can have a, a good year every now and then, or every third year, that, that's, that's, that's not really what it's about. It's about how do you have a consistent approach every single year and win at a high level. And, and um, we have had, you know, in the three years here, we've had a different identity every year. Um, but I think that we've also grown each year, um, you know, and, and when you, when you get into college coaching, you understand there's a lot of four year cycles, even though there's a lot of transfers and stuff. And I think we're, you know, a more well-rounded program today than we were last year. And we were certainly better in year two than we were um, in, in year one. And, and um, you know, feel like our position going into to the future is, is as good as it's been since I've been here. So it doesn't mean you're going to win more games or advance further. It just in the totality of where our program's at, 
from attendance, from enthusiasm statewide to a national brand, you know, it's not just about, you know, where we are from a winning or how many games we've won, but, but right now nationally, um, you know, we've made great strides in three years in a program that already, you know, had great respect nationally, but, but right now uh, people know who we are. They know our brand and style of play um, and know kind of what we represent when we hit the floor. Thank you. Scotty. Yeah, Eric Jalen obviously does a, a lot of things for you guys that are really valuable. Talk about that all the time. I'm curious how important you believe maybe he's been to the three point success that you guys have had just, you know, strictly from a passing standpoint. Yeah, I think because he can play out on the floor and, and last night at halftime, we made a real conscious effort to have him slip screens more and have him roll more because um, we and he are really comfortable with him picking and popping and then, and then being a distributor. But he had some really big time rolls and big time slips to the rim last night that I thought opened up a lot of stuff for Stanley's three balls in the corners and even one of uh, Devo's threes as well. So um, his game just keeps evolving Scotty in so many different ways, but we need him to play well in order for us to win games for sure. This might be a little pointed, but wh why do you think guys have a tendency to shoot a good clip from three off passes from Jalen? Uh, if I had to paraphrase it, on time, on target. He doesn't throw passes at, at the, you know, he doesn't throw balls. He throws strikes. And, um, you know, some players throw balls. I mean, they're out of the strike zone. They're out of the shooting pocket. He does not do that. Um, we even have guard, not just we, there's a lot of guards in college basketball that, you know, on time, on target. And then his passes have the proper backspin on the ball too. A lot of guys throw knuckleballs. It's really freaking hard to shoot a knuckleball that's thrown at your knees. I mean, that, that you, Ray Allen can't knock down those three balls that are knuckleballs and they're thrown to the side of the ear or at the kneecaps, you know, shoulders to, to hit right, right, right in that shooting pocket, which I think is really, really important. You know, lastly, you mentioned last night that you're really pleased with where the team's been up is right now. Maybe how have you seen that shift for the better maybe over the last five, six weeks compared to when you guys were struggling a bit? Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I, I, I uh, I'll take part of the blame too. Um, not part of it. I'll take the blame. I mean, I was, I was searching for rotations, um, you know, and then just got to the point where this is going to be our, 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 our core group and, and we're going to roll with them and allow them to play with great freedom, allow them to play with great confidence. I mean, you go back and watch our Vanderbilt game and, and some of the earlier, I mean, it's just, we're just a completely and utterly different team. Um, you know, and a lot of that's roles, as well. And, and, um, you know, we feel like right now the guys are in a great comfort zone, both on the floor, leadership wise, our, our locker rooms in a great mental state. Um, you know, after wins guys are in, really enjoying it. Um, and that's real, you know, that's really important as well. Touch. Yeah, Coach, uh, I know Tony's been a really consistent guy for you all season pretty hey, much. Touch, touch. I, I don't mean to interrupt. Bob, are you wearing a shirt that I think you're wearing? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get an NIL deal. I saw you tagged him on Twitter. Sorry, Hutch, we'll go right back to you, man. I apologize. <laughs> no, you're no disrespect, kidding. Hutch. I just, I mean, for some reason in my screen, Bob's shirt just kind of jumped out at me. Sorry, Hutch. I'm sorry, man. I understand. Uh, I, I'm curious about Tony. The last couple of games hasn't been kind of what we've come to expect out of him. W what are you seeing from him and, and how does he need to, to get back on track? Yeah, I mean, obviously he struggled against Alabama finishing at the rim, but his defense was awesome against Alabama. I mean, I thought he did as good a job as I've seen anybody do on Shackelford. Um, last night, just one of those nights where mentally every time he stepped on the floor he fouled the guy you know I mean I haven't seen that in college very I've seen I've had a couple 
NBA guys where they walk out there and they just fall and fall and fall. And then, you, you know, they don't have to, they don't have to play that night. That was before, uh, what do we call it? Uh, load management took place. Um, but I just think it was one of those nights where he just, you know, the whistle was coming at him at all angles. And I'm also curious what your thoughts are on, on this Tennessee team. It looked like they, uh, they handled Kentucky pretty well. And, and what, just kind of what are your thoughts on them? What do they do well? They do a lot of things well. Um, I mean, first of all, they're, they're the, one of the only teams that you'll see that plays three-point guards at stretches or even to close games out. Number one, Chandler's as fast as any player in college basketball. Uh, he can shoot a three. He can dribble drive. He's a high steal player. They do a great job jumping passing lanes. Number five, Ziegler is a guy that completely was under-recruited. Coach Barnes and his staff did an awesome job evaluating him. I actually saw him play a game against Nick Smith um, and, and, and kind of was looking at the, at the program to see who he was. Cause, um, but he's a tough kid who really, really competes. So those two guys at, at five, nine and, and uh, six foot are dynamic players. They're fast. Uh, Vescovi, uh, 25 lefty can shoot the ball now playing the two, three used to start at the point guard. Um, Powell started at Auburn last year as a point guard now playing the off guard. So they actually have four players who have point guard experience, uh, in the sec, two of them freshmen that have played the point this year. And then two of them that played the point guard, one at Auburn and one at Tennessee, James, number 30, uh, a switchable player. Uh, a guy who shoots a, a lot of threes, but can also offensive rebound. Uh, Fulkerson has given us absolute nightmares in the post at times. Got a spin game, an isolation game on the elbow. I don't know how old he is, um, but he's certainly been in the league a lot longer than I have. Um, so he's got immense experience. He might have more experience than our entire roster put together. Um, so a really, really good team and a really, really well-coached basketball team. I think Rick Barnes has been one of the great college coaches since he's been in the college game. And certainly right now, I don't think that anybody in college basketball does a better job coaching his roster than Coach Barnes does. Nate? I think pretty well everyone got answered, but I was going to ask, well, was about Vescovi, just kind of what problems does he give you uh, specifically? Well, obviously one of the best three-point shooters, Nate, in all of college basketball, one of the premier three-point shooters in, in the SEC. Uh, he'll take a lot of threes. Um, a lot of them are catch and shoot, so you can't give him any airspace. You've got to locate him in transition as quick as possible. Um, you know, early on, we forced him right. Uh, you know, a few years ago, we really jumped on his, on his, on his, on his left hand. He's been much improved dribbling the ball with his right hand. Um, we're going to have to play him much more squared up than we did, um, you know, a year ago. Uh, great toughness. Uh, you know, a guy that, I mean, he'll fly in there and get an offensive rebound from the weak side, but you, you can't give him airspace on his, on his three point shot or, or it becomes a very, very long night. You, you, you know, you've got to get a, a high hand on him on your closeouts um, and a guy that constantly moves and knows how to read screens that are set for him, whether he flattens out the screen on a fade, he does that really, really well. They, they, they're, they're players. You can tell how well they're coached when, when there's down screen set, because sometimes they'll curl. Some of their personnel will curl. Some of them will fade um off screens based on how the defense is playing them so we're going to have to mix things up on our defensive coverage you can't give them a steady diet because they're so well coached thank you Curtis coach what are you seeing from Tennessee on the defensive end that that stands out it looks like they're top five or so in the country in adjusted defensive efficiency well they steal the ball a lot number one um Curtis that's you know you if you turn the ball over it's not, it's not going to be a fun night. You, you can't give up live ball turnovers to them. Uh, the two guards are, they're just basketball thieves back there. I mean, they, they back tip a lot. So in other words, if you, if you get by them, they'll back tip. Um, and, and then they got guys that jump in passing lanes as well. Um, so if you go by them, you've got to keep the ball in the center of your, 
you, you, you know, your body, you can't, if you're dribbling by with your right hand, you can't keep it on the side of your right body or they're going to back tip it or vice versa. If you, if you dribble drive to the left, they'll back tip it. So you got to keep that ball in the front of your body so that it eliminates back tip. So, so a little technique like that, we're going to have to spend, you know, cause we're not practicing today. We're going to have to spend time working on some of those little nuances. If I throw a pass to Mike Kaywood, Mike's got to jump to the ball. He can't wait on it. Uh, so that's called shorten the pass. We we've got to shorten the pass on all of our passes, whether it's a post up, whether it's an entry pass or they'll jump in the passing lanes. And, and then they're just so fundamentally sound. They will mix in a little one, three, one zone as well. So you've got to recognize when they throw that at you as well. Thank you. Bob finishes up, please. Yeah. Eric, I, th I think folk Fulkerson's 34, but I, I need to look that up. Um, hey, get going back to last night, you know, if you guys played Mizzou more often, Trey might be an All-American. Uh, you know, he does all the in intangible things, but he's he scored 29 against Mizzou this year. Um, when he scores, how big a bonus is that? Well, it's huge. Um, you know, and he was he needed to have a big night because because he was starting to earn a new nickname about box score was if if he didn't you know jump up there and do something and but he's. We all we, like he just kind of negates his man, much like Justin Smith, you know, whoever Justin guarded, we knew that guy was going to be held well below his average. That's what's happening with Trey. And now you add in the fact that he, he I thought he did a great job pounding the backboards. You know, his thing every time out is, well, coach, I blocked out my man and he's right. Like his man never was rebounding. But I said, well, you you got to block out and rebound like that's. <laughs> we can't have four guys blocking out and the ball's bouncing. Somebody has got to go get it. Um, and I thought he did a good job blocking out Bob and pursuing the basketball. And we needed him to do that. And I thought he was much more aggressive for whatever reason against coach Martin's team. He, I mean, he took the first four shots, you know, of the game and it wasn't like we were calling plays for him. And I think he came out with an, an aggressive mindset, which really helps us. So, so his nickname was going to be box score or what yeah. was it? Okay. Or non box score, but that doesn't really make sense. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, Stanley's obviously been scoring really well. We talked about, you know, Scotty asked you about the other day, how well he scored since the old miss game. And, you know, Scotty did this tweeted this shot chart. He's like uh Scott bro uh, or Scott Bohr website or something now like Ken Pop or whatever, but, but, um, what do you think of Stanley? He's, he's got that sweet spot over there. Just what do you thought about his scoring, scoring surge? Uh, Bob, is this directed at me or Scotty? I'm sorry. It's directed at you. I was just trying to throw Scotty a bone there. <laughs> um, the magic is in the work. And what I mean by that is one of the things that becomes um, new or is foreign to some guys is how much time you have to invest away from the coaching staff and work on your craft. He turned a switch about maybe five weeks ago and he's in here all the time shooting. And you know, all we can do is give our players examples. Hey, call Mason Jones, ask him how much time he spent on his own. Hey, call Moses Moody and find out how focused he was in the off season or in season and how much shooting. And then we can give examples of NBA players, whether it's Gilbert arenas coming back and shooting for three hours the night after a game, all the, and Stan slowly, but surely. And that's why he's playing well. Cause he's, he's getting so many reps up shooting the three that it's hard not to really improve. And that, then you start building your confidence up. And right now he's as confident offensive players we've had here in three years. He said slowly but surely, but then you, you didn't finish the sentence. What, what, what was the rest of that? I don't he said know. He, slowly, he said he slowly but surely, then you shifted gears. <laughs> was well, I guess right? that means early on he wasn't shooting on his own quite as much as we would have hoped. Does that make sense with slowly but surely or no? Yeah. I don't know. My mom used that phrase all the time. I don't know what the heck it means. Okay. G uh, gradually, probably. That's there good. you go. Gradually.
Yeah. And I just got one more, you know, the crowd was so epic, you know, for the Auburn game. This is your first home game since then. You're playing another uh, top, you know, 20 team and, and uh, obviously a quality program in Tennessee. Just kind of what are you expecting from the crowd? And could it, you know, duplicate what, what the Auburn crowd was like? Or is that just not realistic? Wow. Well, first of all, everybody's going to be dressed in red, including our players. Um, they'll have red uniforms as well. And uh, we've already cleared that um, with the league and in Tennessee. And uh, Bob, you're asking if 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 it, if what was your exact words? If is it unrealistic? No, I said is it realistic? I, is it realistic to think the crowd could match what it was like for the audience? I think the crowd is going to supersede what we saw against Auburn. That's what I think. And I really do believe that. I, I understand that the number one team in the country at the time was coming in, but right now we have two ranked teams. Um, they just beat Kentucky. I think everybody that came to the Auburn game uh, left excited and they were, I hope they were saying like, how can I experience that again? Well, guess what, everybody? You can experience it again. Just show up to Bud Walton for the Tennessee game on Saturday and let's have some fun, bring your energy, enthusiasm, and let's rock Bud Walton again. Get that message out there, Bob. Okay. That's got one more. I don't know if you saw us on Twitter. I'm not even sure who posted the photo, but there's a picture of you during the game and you're looking kind of intense. And then Danielle's behind you and she's looking like as intense as you are. I was wondering, did you see that photo? And do you have any idea was she pissed at the ref or was, uh, I don't know, just something. Do you have any idea what was going on there? At one point, I heard her yell, V5 up, run V5 up for Jalen. So I don't know if she's trying to call plays now or what, uh, but I did see that picture. I did tweet it out. You got to read my Twitter more, Bob, because I, I tweeted I, it out I last I follow time. you. That's probably where I saw it. You know? okay. <laughs> I mean, the big people were commenting like you didn't take the garbage out, you left the toilet seat up, or you did all these things, I guess, would tick off wives. No, I'll t if Danielle was mad at me, she would not have been in Columbia last night. I promise you that. And the door would have been locked when I got home at 1.30 a.m. or whenever we landed. I would have been out in the pool house. She she don't play, man. She definitely would have got would not have gotten on that plane if she was mad at me. And I do do the garbage every single night and the laundry she's never touched laundry since we've been married i'm out have a good day see you saturday